A couple of weeks ago, a company called Plimpton, who I, much like you, very likely, had never heard of before, reached out to me via email and asked if I would review their new Android tablet. Now, like a lot of these emails that I get, I began to dismiss this and move on. But something about it got me curious. So I went on Amazon and I found this tablet. And this thing retails $139. It's supposed to be running Android 11. And from the outside appearance, this thing looks okay. For $140, it might be more than okay. So I decided this might be a fun experiment to check in with the world of affordable, dare I say cheap, Android tablets and see what they are fully capable of doing today, now, in 2022. So I have here with me today the Plimpton Plimpad P50, which I will resist at all cost from calling a Plumbus because that would be very unprofessional. And we're going to take a look at it. I'm going to put it through its paces. And I'm going to tell you if it's worth the money. So the first thing we need to do is let's look at the box here. Now, I've already unboxed it. It was kind of a pretty typical unboxing experience. But this is what you're going to get in the mail should you order this thing. And honestly, it looks pretty nice. You've got some nice, colorful holographic lettering up here, which is pretty solid. On the back side, we have some specifications that we can go over. Plimpad P50, this thing runs an octa-core CPU, which I did some research on, and I managed to determine that this is a Unisoc T16 processor, which is not particularly powerful, but I think you'll be surprised at what it's capable of doing later on in this video. It's got a front-facing and rear-facing camera, which I will show you samples of as well. 10.1-inch IPS touchscreen, 1080p. Obviously, this is 60 hertz, so no high refresh rate here. 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, which is also not crazy, but there is micro SD expansion, so that's pretty nice to have. It is capable of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, although there will be more on that as well. Comes with a charger and a cable. Crazy, radical idea there. And overall, yeah, that's pretty much what you get in the box. Taking a look now at the actual tablet itself, we've got, you know, relatively large bezels, but I don't think that they're anything too particularly radically crazy. We have on this side here a power button as well as your volume rocker, a USB-C port. Kind of odd that the USB-C is on the same side as these guys here, because let's say you're going to be charging and using it now, your volume and power are on the bottom. That's a little bit weird, but whatever, it is what it is. On the bottom, we have two stereo speakers and some kind of a pogo connector where I think there might be a keyboard case or something, but I couldn't actually find a listing for that on their Amazon page or anything like that. On the back side, this is made of some sort of metal, which is evidently relatively soft because if you can see this here, I've already managed to scratch the back of it. That's going to happen on this thing. It is what it is. And then there is your LED flash with a camera bump on the back. And there, of course, is, as I mentioned, your SD card slot. So powering the thing on, the first thing that I noticed was, of course, the screen. And I got to talk about the screen for just a second because it's not very good. If we crank this thing up to maximum brightness, which is where we are now, it is still just not very bright at all. This thing just does not get very bright. It does at least manage to kind of maintain itself when you're off axis. It doesn't do anything too crazy when you're when you're wildly off axis. I have installed Nova Launcher on here. The default launcher just looks like a pretty stock Android launcher. You go to your left page and you get a Google feed and it's pretty stock bone basic. I went ahead and installed Nova just because that is easier for me to use. The biggest problem I see with this thing is probably going to be this screen. Like I said, this is max brightness. Let's compare this rather unfairly to a much more expensive tablet in the Galaxy Tab S7, which if we put right here below, and let's go ahead and max out the brightness here, and uh, hopefully this will come across on the video. It probably won't, but this is wildly brighter than this screen. Here is, I would say that we are at about a similar brightness here, and we're, we're maybe a third of the way up the slider on the S7. Now, of course, this is a very unfair comparison because the S7, is much more expensive than the Plim Pad. However, the problems with the screen for me continue. Let's go to YouTube here, which you'll notice launches relatively quickly. And let's pull up a video of myself. And the biggest thing that I notice here 
is that some areas that are bright are really bright, and some areas that are dark are really dark. It's weird. It's like some kind of weird HDR thing going on. It's not HDR, but it just looks odd to me. The shadows are just wildly dark, and there's no detail in them at all. And I actually dug into some settings here, and lo and behold, there is a color and contrast section. And I tried all these different settings, and really, automatic contrast is the best it's going to get. And even then, it's not that great. But if that's something you can overlook, it doesn't look horrible. It's not something that is just totally unusable, but it is something that I need to mention. That being said, a big part of the multimedia consumption aspect of something like this are the speakers. And of course, this has two bottom firing stereo speakers. So let's go ahead and open up. Let's just do YouTube music and we'll do a rather dynamic song that I love to use for testing and I'm only going to play for a brief moment because I don't want to get demonetized and that will be Hook by Blues Travel. The microphone is all of about this far away from the tablet. Let's go ahead and let this play and you'll be able to hear what I'm experiencing here on maximum volume. And again, Tab S7, which are some of the best tablet speakers in the market for a very unfair comparison. And of course, there is no real comparison there, but of course, this is like five times more expensive than this. And I would describe the sound as being probably on the bad side of, of audio. It is rather distorted sounding. There's kind of almost a staticky sound to it. It's pretty loud, I'll give it that, but there's almost no bass. It's all sort of mids and highs. Not a particularly good set of speakers. However, if all you're going to use it for is watching something on YouTube. And is, well, it's really twofold. One, the thing has curved screens on the inside, which makes screen protection. Could you get around it? Could you use it? Absolutely, that is the case. And if we jump over to something like Netflix, you'll find that this is a totally passable experience. So in terms of just multimedia consumption, I think the Plimpad P50 is going to get a passing grade here again for $140. And in general, it's relatively quick. I mean, when we launch different applications, let's launch Edge here. You can kind of see how fast all of that did work. Let's go to the Plimpton website and you'll see how quickly that does in fact load. Scrolling is relatively smooth. The web browsing experience is going to be pretty solid. Launching the Play Store, get an idea there as well. This is relatively quick. I mean, this thing actually does bounce around the operating system pretty quickly. And that is despite the fact that if we pull up a screenshot I took here of a Geekbench score, that we're dealing with a Geekbench score of 350 for single core and 1268 for multi-core, which is, dare I say, very, very bad. It's almost one third of what something like the Tab S7 does get, but somehow this thing does actually perform pretty admirably. So I mentioned the cameras in the beginning of this video. Let's take a look here at what kind of quality you can expect out of the front-facing camera. And look, it's a tablet, it's a cheap tablet, front-facing camera. Perhaps you want to do a video call or something like that. That's going to be passable. You can see what kind of level of detail we have here. What about the actual world facing camera? Well, in that regard, you've got this. It's kind of a washed out, not, again, it is what it is. For comparison, here is a picture taken by the Tab S7. There you go for a comparison, which is not a great picture either. It's not super detailed, but the colors definitely pop a bit more and it is definitely more detailed than what you get on the Plim Pad. But let's be honest, you're not buying this thing to take pictures with. The cameras are cool that they're there, but it's not something that you're really going to be using. However, something that you might want to use this thing for, and it's actually a legitimate use case for this, shockingly, is gaming. So let's jump into a whole bunch of gaming tests on the Plimpad P50. Let's jump first into Minecraft, because that is a game that a lot of people use. And I, I'm picturing in my mind for this, this is a cheap kind of disposable tablet that you might buy and give to a child because this is something that, again, it's not super expensive. Can they play some of the games that they, that they enjoy playing on this thing? Absolutely. So let's jump into Minecraft here, just right out of the box, no change settings at all. You'll get an idea here of how fast all of this does work as we load in now. <clears throat> I 
And there we go. We are in my uh, Minecraft world that I've not looked at in quite some time, but it does still exist. This is a little awkward trying to play from this perspective, but forgive me if I look like I don't know what I'm doing. It's also been a little while and I don't really ever play on Android. So let me try and get kind of a vantage point here. I've also got to deal with the glare from my, <laughs> from my light as well, which actually might look better if it was turned off. Can you see better now? As I move up here. Let's look around a little bit. And you'll see, you know, maybe you can't tell, maybe you can't, but this is actually running extremely well. I'm getting effectively no frame drops at all. It's running absolutely buttery smooth. Minecraft is an absolute win. What about Pokemon Unite? This is a, a game that has gained some popularity over the last little bit. Let's see how it runs. Now, as you see there, I'm downloading some update data, and this is a good place for me to mention that when I had this thing connected to a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection, it kept dropping the Wi-Fi. Did it like three or four times. I switched over to the 2.4 gigahertz version of my Wi-Fi, and I have not had the first dropout at all. Don't know what to make of that. It is what it is. Your mileage may vary, but it doesn't seem to like 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi in my experience. Okay, so let's just do a practice battle here real quick. Because I don't want to jump into an online match and then quit out of it. That would be... That would be very rude. So here we are in Pokemon Unite. We are loading into a practice match here. And you can see my loading progress there. Is it the fastest thing in the world to load in? No, but is it unplayable? Is it too slow to use? Absolutely not. And once you're in the game, you're going to see... No problems at all. This thing runs just fine. Pokemon Unite is absolutely no problem at all for this thing. Pokemon Unite is another win. Let's push things a bit further. Let's go to PUBG Mobile. While we're loading into PUBG Mobile, I also want to point out that normal Android 11 things, as this is Android 11, do work. You can, in fact, do split screen. So if you wanted to do multiple things at once, even on this relatively low powered processor guess what you actually can i know this is only four gigs of ram but as i've talked about before you don't actually need 12 gigs of ram on android to be able to get by you can do it on quite a bit less and i think that this will kind of prove the point there that this is totally doable so here we are in the pre-match lobby and you will see that everything is running pretty darn well i mean i had a little stutter there but people are still loading in, and this kind of is a little bit difficult. We'll let it load in where I'm actually in the plane and get on the ground so that we can fully experience it. But let me just tell you, we are running absolutely fine. Not a problem in the world playing PUBG Mobile on this thing. All right, we are flying overhead the wonderful island of Erangel or Erangel, depending on how you choose to pronounce it. Let's just go ahead and jump here and get on the ground. I'm not a big player of PUBG Mobile, but I did play a ton of PUBG on the PC when it came out, but the mobile version just doesn't really do much for me. I can't do touchscreen controls, but I'm more than happy to get on the ground here and show you guys how this does run on this, again, $140 tablet. And the screen problems I mentioned earlier in games like this don't really seem to be a problem. It's more in video content than it is in games. In games, the screen looks totally passable. You can see there some of the geometry popping in as I get closer. That is to be expected on something like this. But absolutely not a deal breaker. All right, we are on the ground here. And let's see if we can find ourselves a gun. And this is running great. There's really no problems here. And if you're the type of person that likes to play these mobile games... You are certainly a different person than I am because I am struggling mightily just to walk around in this. But if you're this kind of person, I would argue that I would argue that you're going to be able to have a pretty good time playing this. Oh, that was a quick clip. We're gonna get closer. Okay. Well, we killed somebody. So there you go. PUBG Mobile is another win for the Plim Pad. What about on some emulators? Let's jump to something absolutely crazy here. Let's jump to Dolphin, which is a GameCube emulator, and we're going to load up Wind Waker. Now, I've got this thing running at pretty much just stock settings. I don't have it up resed or upscaled or anti-aliasing, anything like that at all. This is just exactly as it should be, because when I go any further, I do run into performance problems and things don't run particularly well. But if we 
jump in here to Wind Waker, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised to see that this is actually probably playable. So I'm getting like 22, 23 FPS here. Now, is this the greatest performance in the world that I've ever seen? No, it's not. But we're emulating a GameCube on a $140 Android tablet. That is pretty impressive. And I'm sure you could tweak some settings to get the performance up even better than that. Let me show you what I'm talking about here in terms of the frame rate, you can kind of see it yourself. I think that's pretty impressive actually. So GameCube is gonna be hit or miss, it's gonna be dependent upon the games that you are in fact playing, but other emulators are going to run just fine. So something like the Nintendo DS is gonna be a really good experience for sure. So you can see here, this is running totally smoothly it's probably running as well as it ever did on the actual ds so i would say you know low-end emulation is going to be something you're going to be able to do pretty well on this thing if you wanted to pair a bluetooth controller or something you would be able to do that on here as well without a whole lot of problem are you going to be you know emulating the ps2 and things like that no probably not but a lot of Android gaming is accessible to you on this in fact PUBG mobile pokemon unite minecraft Pocket City. I've even tested COD Mobile on here, which I guess people are going to get mad at me if I don't show COD Mobile, so I guess we'll load it up too. Okay, so here we are in a match on COD Mobile, a game that I also uh, have no ability to play at all. But this is running really smoothly. Let's see if I can go get myself killed here real quick. And this game actually looks pretty solid. I almost killed a guy. All right, I got a kill. I mean, is that good enough? Is that good enough to, to have gotten a kill? I can't believe how bad I am at mobile games. Like, there are children that will just absolutely dominate me on something like this. And after all the testing that we just did, which was quite a bit, a lot of this stuff got cut down and edited down as I'm loading in and out of games, obviously. You didn't see everything that happened. I'm sitting at 76% battery, so I've lost about a quarter of the battery while doing these things. So while gaming, the battery life probably isn't going to be unbelievable, but luckily, they packed in a charger this time, unlike everybody else. So you can just keep the thing plugged in if you need to do that. Personally, I'm pretty surprised at how good these budget or dare I say cheap Android tablets have gotten. For me, the biggest drawback is still probably going to be the screen and the speakers. They're pretty lackluster, but if you can get past that, in particular, if you're maybe a younger individual, you're buying this for your son, your daughter, your niece, your nephew, your grandson, your granddaughter, etc., etc., they're probably not going to notice these things. And for $140, the thing is made of metal here on the back. Maybe it's going to be a little bit more durable than a than something that's glass on glass or something more premium that you don't want to give to a child for them to destroy. I think it's a great choice for something like this. Or let's say you're someone that just wants a cheap tablet to throw in a bag that you don't want to have to worry about. I think there's a good use case for that as well. This is not a Galaxy Tab competitor, but again, I keep saying this over and over. It's cheap. $140 $40 is disposable income for some people. Maybe not right now because the world is on fire, but it used to be disposable income for some people, and maybe it still is for some of you. And at that price, I think the Plumpton Plum Pad P50, too many P words in there for my taste. I think it's a pretty solid tablet, and I just can't stress enough how surprised I continue to be at how well these things perform in gaming. You can actually get some gaming done on this thing. Set it up on a dock, pair a controller Bluetooth to it, maybe stream from your computer over Steam or Moonlight, something like that. There's a lot of use cases for something this inexpensive. Thanks again to Plimpton for sending this tablet over. If you want to check it out yourself, there will be an affiliate link in the description down below that like button, which you might as well click on your way down there. It does help the algorithm quite a bit. Thanks for making it to the end of this rather in-depth video and gaming demonstration. If you enjoyed the video, which you probably did because you just watched all of it, click that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.